Hello everyone, I'm Nathaniel Matthews with the Global Resilience Partnership, and I'm really excited to be joined here today by Dominic and Shalaka from the Youth Climate Lab. Hey. Um, we're going to have a great conversation about youth and resilience. Yeah. Shalaka, can I turn to you first? Yeah. Could you tell us um, a little bit about the story, about how you got here, and why you're excited for this moment? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, thanks Thanks so much for having us. We're, we're really excited we to, to be here. Um, yeah, I think the story is a really important part about how we, we got here, you know, and I, I think both of us come in from, from Canada too. We've been learning a lot about positionality um, and how that's part of protocol in introducing yourselves in, in a space. Um, and so I want to start by sharing a little bit of the story of my name, which is uh, the first thunderstrike of the first storm of the monsoon season. Um, and I carry this meaning through the work that we do at Youth Climate Lab in sort of um, this role as a researcher, designer, and, and facilitator. And I, I think it'll be really interesting in our conversation to hold space for these stories because you know stories and resilience have a really interesting connection together in that stories and, and songs too hold a space to, to protect. You know, you can't quite extract knowledge in the same way as, as like a panel. Uh, so so I'm, I'm really excited to sort of frame it through that through that and, and and um, yeah, I guess I guess my story is, is coming to this work as, as an urban planner, um, as a student of, of curatorial practices, um, and bringing the lens of climate to, to those spaces and, and understanding resilience through, through that. Yeah. Great, mm -hmm. fantastic. Et pour Dominique. moi, so for me, um, you know, actually just building on that theme, my last name, uh, it means water provider, water connector, my, my Greek, uh, my Greek side is from Asia Minor, current day Turkey. Um, and yeah, I found a lot of meaning in that name because of, you know, apparently my ancestors were folks who connected and brought water to different villages. And I take more of that connection because I feel like that was what brought me to this work, connecting with young people from all different parts of the world, connecting um, to support their work, uh, connecting with folks in the north and in the south. And that's what really brought to creating Youth Climate Lab in the first place, um, as well as being here at COP26 in this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And in terms of, um, GRP, we divide our work across these four areas. So it's innovate, share, yeah. convene, advance. And I think that's kind of a useful framing for thinking about resilience and how we want to build movements and do work on the ground. So I'd like to hear just some insights from both of you, maybe Shalaka starting again, yeah. about you know how your work fits into those categories and, and, yeah. and where it's going and some exciting stuff you're working on. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, I think innovation is, is a really interesting terminology right now. And, and I think we're really lucky to work with, with youth that are genuinely very innovative, not only in the sort of ideas that they're they're engaging with but also sort of the the shifts that they want to see and so at youth climate lab we've sort of organized our work around skill shift policy shift and finance shift um, and I know finance is a really big uh, theme for for cop 26 and and um, youth are really excited to see the kind of you know ambition we need on on finance right right now um, we're really keen on on the work around building leadership and, and capacity you know uh, Dominique mentioned this idea of building center a synergy excuse me between uh, north and south and I think that's particularly important in this moment where we are really acknowledging that climate is not, you know, along borders. Climate is is across borders and, and we really need to build international solidarity to, to move work ahead on, on the sort of ambition that we wanna we wanna do. Um, yeah, what are yeah. what are you sort of thinking on, on on how innovation plays into the work that we're doing right now? Yeah, well I think those themes are exactly along the <laughs> exactly all the yeah. all the, the work that we do and particularly one of our large projects called the Climate Resilience Collective. And before getting to that, just a little bit about Youth Climate Lab. We exist to innovate, yeah. to solve the problems that young people are having in their fight against climate change. And so, you know, we've found that no matter where you are, the barriers do change and, and there are definitely challenges, especially for those from communities already made vulnerable. But a common theme among young people taking climate action today is we're passionate, but also we struggle with access to financing, access to policy spaces, um, as well as access to opportunities to build our skills. And so Youth Climate Lab exists to design projects to innovate um, and really advance that. And so, yeah, the Climate Resilience Collective, I don't know if you wanted to, to introduce that. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of different pieces with the Climate Resilience yeah. Collective. Um, we have a we have two poly projects that we've been connected with. Um, one is, is a, I think, a partner with, with uh, GRP. It's mm -hmm. the, it's ICAD, so the 
International Center for Climate Change and, and Development. Um, so we have a pilot project in Bangladesh with 10 young youth um, who have done some incredible work, including a climate finance uh, letter that we'll, we'll, ch we'll chat about in, in one of those other phases. Um, <laughs> and we've also been working with the Yukon First Nations Climate Action um, Fellowship, which has been such an incredible uh, journey. They've, they started their journey and, and we support in the first bit and, and uh, we're continuing to support in sort of the next couple of stages uh, where they're carrying out um, traditional knowledge work in, as part of climate, you know. Um, they, they don't separate climate from, from the issues like we tend to do. Um, it's, it's very much embedded in the worldview of how they see the, uh, see the work. Um, so bringing together, you know, they're, they're operating pilots and then we're, they're also brought together under the key themes of, of adaptation and, and, and work around that. So that's been really exciting to see, you know, like the connections that they're sparking within each other. Um, they, they noticed uh, the, the movement of, of traditional knowledge into the space and, and the importance of, of grounding within that. Um, they've noticed the sort of, um, you know, uh, solidarity and camaraderie within one another and, and building a momentum based, based on that, which, is, which has been just yeah. inspiring to see oh. how, they, how they bring that back to communities, you know, especially over COVID-19. There's just been so much disconnection that's, mm -hmm. that's amplified over the digital divide. Um, and so the work there has been, has been really incredible to, to sort of see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so taking us just off script, because it just sort of came to me, I know yeah. that uh, there's so much, you know, I guess energy around youth engagement in climate at the moment. Yeah. As the Youth Climate Lab, how do you both balance that with sort of being substantively engaged as opposed to people sort of just, you know, having mm. you there and just mm. wanting, you know, your face or your organization yeah. logo on things? Like how, how do you find that balance and, and what are the kind of things that you're, you know, working on around that? So. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to chat on that? I can maybe kick it off with also like a reflection because yeah. Youth Climate Lab, we started over four years ago. So this was pre-Greta. And so even thinking about our cop, the cops that we went to four years ago, we had to literally make the case for youth. Yeah. It was young people need to be here. Mm -hmm. Now it's a, a bit of a different conversation. It's okay, young people are here. How do we shift what's happening in these rooms and how do we engage and co-create yeah. with young people? And so I think that's, that's really important because in the last four years it has shifted considerably, yeah. but we still have so much work to do. And in terms of balancing, I think it's saying, okay, well, if we have a room at the table, one, who's not here with us? And two, also saying, okay, well, how do we work together and build trust so that maybe we don't need a table, maybe we can create something completely different yeah. so that we can actually connect and actually take the action that we need. Yeah, and we're also seeing a lot of young people, you know, rejecting these traditional spaces yeah. and, and sort of going yeah. um, into the grassroots direction to sort of take on this action. Um, and so back to the question around, you know, um, how do we avoid that tokenization that happens mm -hmm. in these spaces? We, we, you know, we we prep we prep the youth that we work with to say, yeah. you know, these are the things that you should notice. You know, things like, are you doing it unpaid? Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, being asked a particular question without, you know, balance to sort of explore your own interests, right? And and really exploring this idea idea of not just, you know, a conversation being the one way or, or extractive, yeah. but really to build one's own knowledge base to take back to communities and engage in that in that multiplicity, you know? Yeah. Um, because that's, that's the work that we want to do. You know, the work isn't just about, all right, you know, like, let's wrap it up and, and now we're done. It's, it's around that continued loop of cycle, uh, cycle mm -hmm. of knowledge that we want to make sure that people are, are are a part of, you know, ensuring the life cycle of knowledge continues and, and actually has space to breathe and, and evolve as, as well. Um, so we do a little, we have a yeah. little bit of a, of a one pager of like, you know, red flags to look out for yeah. when, when folks are engaging you. Um, and some people, you know, pursue that and, and are still interested in, in those kinds of opportunities. But others, you know, it gives them some some notes to sort of catch and say, okay, these are these are places I can be critical of. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really important to do, um, especially in these large scale environments where that can happen really easily. Yeah. yeah. And for the young at heart, yeah. who are on this panel and listening, <laughs> um, it's also around, you know, how do you provide those resources for young people to be yes. there? So it's not, you know, funding is important to be in these spaces, but also understanding what spaces you're coming into, throwing a young person uh, yes. on a panel, on a board with no, no support. Does a complete disservice to them as well as the causes that they want to be bringing forward, and so really are thinking about supporting young people. Mm -hmm. It's really bringing them in and creating the spaces and, and the conditions for them yeah. to be able to, to show up in their full selves and, and in their power. Yeah, I just want to add too. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no lack of spark with with us. You know, yeah. um, we're 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 feisty, we're passionate, and we're excited. And so these narratives of, of apathy or, mm. or you know like we're you're 
word quiet is is kind of made up, you know, it's it's not really there. Um, maybe what you're seeing is a bit of distrust in the sort of processes yeah. that we've been a part of. Um, and I think that's really important to tap into and, and for folks who want to support young people, really paying attention to why they're not coming to you. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you seem approachable and you're open and you're excited, they will we will find you. You know, yeah. that's that's yeah. not the issue. Yeah. Um, I think really interrogating some of the where that distrust for, for the organization might be coming from is a really important you know starting point for understanding what capacity building gaps you need to start to fill. That's yeah. Really, uh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. fantastic reflections in it. Um, so I spoke with Salim, the Professor Hook, yes. the director yes. for, of, of the International Center for Climate Change and Development yeah. yesterday, and he, he had this turn of phrase of saying, you know, this is the conference of parties, but outside is the conference of the people. And it, yes. it's really about sort of, you know, how we engage and, and actually having sort of talks like this and being them, having them live streamed and sort of all this digital inclusiveness I think is really key and I, I assume that's also really benefiting youth worldwide as well, being yeah, able to huge, see inside what hugely. is a really inaccessible space usually. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I was I was taking pictures of the space to sort of send back to people because yeah. it is unimaginable, you yeah. know? It is unimaginable, like the scale of this work, um, but at the same time, like it's it's also unimaginable and, and the kind of scale of work that's happening on the grassroots, you know? Um, and it's it's exciting to see both of those meeting together and 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 come in coming to this point. And it's it's a really important one, you know? Yes. And um, I don't know, a lot of people were were like, it's kinda like a big museum exhibit. <laughs> and it sometimes does feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. But building on, I mean Salim, the conference of the people I love and I think it like it's also the conference of the partnerships. I think yes, this is nice. a platform, even if you're not here in Glasgow, yeah. this is a moment to really bring people together around climate. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a huge privilege to be here in Glasgow. And it's it's just a moment to be able to say, okay, well, what are the partnerships that need to exist? You know, we, we know that we need more action. We know that it needs to happen now and we can't do it alone. And so how do we really leverage this moment for, as Christiana Figueres would say, for radical collaboration? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. no, that's fantastic, I really like those thoughts. And I think that, um, you know, we're seeing a lot more attention into adaptation and resilience at yeah. the moment. It's really exciting, but it has to be harnessed and used in a meaningful way and, and be really inclusive. And uh, I think that's where we're getting there. There's still a long way to go, but it's yeah. it's really good. So thinking that, you've, you've kind of given me a bit of a preview about how the youth movement has evolved over mm -hmm. the last few years. Yeah. But so if I was flipping that around, I think about it to the future. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the key things you're thinking of, um, you know, coming up over the next year? What are the things that Youth Climate Lab is doing in, yeah. in 2022 that you're really excited about and um, and what should we be on the watch for? Yeah, yeah. So I think something that's that's very exciting is folks are excited about um, entering the climate finance space, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the work that we have to do there is in, in yes and demystifying those spaces, which are very complex and maybe a little bit scary, um, but also reminding people, you know, if this is the conference of, of the of the parties and the people and of the partnerships, that they have a space in, the, in that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so one way that we're really excited about is, is continuing to mobilize the energy around the uh, climate finance mm -hmm. demands letter that um, the youth from Bangladesh have, have written. Um, it's it's going to be out soon. Uh, check it out at youthclimatelab.org slash COP26. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they held this incredible workshop to, to talk about climate finance and, and engage on, on their demands and really articulate them in a way that felt, you know, rooted in, in community. And I think that's some yeah. of the work that we definitely want to want to continue. Exactly. How do we really mainstream youth responsive climate yes. finance? Yeah. You know, especially considering that climate finance can be one of the greatest tools for climate justice. And so you'll, you can, we want to do more of that work um, as well as grow our collective. We've been so grateful over the, over the last yeah. two years to have been able to start the Climate Resilience Collective with our amazing partners, as Shalaka mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and, our, and our amazing funder, Climate Justice Resilience <laughs> Fund. Shout out to you. Um, but also, yeah, how do we continue the momentum and how do we bring in more folks in the collective um, to really connect what's happening in communities in the local, local communities in the south and the north mm -hmm. and really leverage, leverage that those partnerships to, to scale youth -led climate action. Mm -hmm. And there's some beautiful stuff that comes from that geographical meeting, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. I, th I think we can sort of feel, yeah. feel some of that here, but just even things like, you know, um, integrating language into those conversations mm -hmm. and, and saying, oh, what's that word? Like, can I say it? Can I practice saying it? And it's it's pretty incredible when you hear, you know, that that moment when, when people are meeting even digitally. And I think um, there's a lot of power in that, in harnessing that international solidarity work and, yeah. and con connecting across the scales of, of local, national, and, and international.
Yeah, that's fantastic. I think bringing the cultures together is energizing in itself, and that's yeah. wonderful. So, just want to thank you both very much for a fantastic Thanks talk. For I've certainly us. been energized by it myself, yeah. and uh, I'm really excited to see uh, what the future is uh, ahead for for this. And wonderful to have you here. So, thank you both. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>